It's a great day to be alive. All right, anyways, I'm a nerd. <laughs> the point is, we just completed another off-grid application here. I just wanted to kind of get you guys uh, updated on uh, the projects that we're doing here. So we have the uh, GrowWatt series again, Infinis LS 5000 watt from Signature Solar. It's a stackable system, 48 volt base, uh, 100 um, um, amp output. So potentially, you know, 4800 to 5200 watts potentially. Uh, and then a stackable up to 30 kW. So um, the basic wiring comes in from the battery, goes right into the inverter. I'll go ahead and show you here. Battery, this is not completed, so don't bitch. Um, battery comes in, negative and positive, goes right into the terminal aspect. You have your PV lines that are coming in again. Um, it goes positive, negative. Uh, so red, black, red, black, it's always red, black. Then you have your outgoing power, which is again, red, black, and then you have your incoming power. We're not using incoming power for this inverter and this inverter for the generator. The reason why is because the generator is not powerful enough, right? So we got to run about like 5,500 watts just to keep this thing at bay, charging the system and trying to power the house. And um, so it's, it's not there. So we came up with a conclusion. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stack 36 solar panels grand total, 18 and 18 on this circuit here, leaving this PV open, but I'm not using the PV, I'm just using the, uh, the MPPT, um, multi-point power tracking system for the 240 volt coming in from the generator. So these go night night, and then he runs the house, charges the batteries and keeps everything flowing. If not, then these things would be clicking on, clicking off, clicking on, trying to power up from the generator, and it's never gonna happen because it's just not powerful enough. It's like trying to have a 20, 25 pound person, you know, push a 10,000 pound vehicle. It's, it's not gonna go. It doesn't matter even if it's going downhill. So we do have an additional 10 kW stacked in here. Like I said, uh, we do have this nice little uh, nifty cabinet that we're gonna end up building and adding on. The customer's gonna basically just have a cabinet from one end to the other. We're just gonna get rid of the cat box here and uh, move on to the next side. Let me go ahead and show you what's going on outside. All right, so this is our main PV line coming in and going out throughout the, uh, the inside of the house here where the inverters are on the other side here. Sorry for the noise here. So DC lines coming in for 36 solar panels on three bridge circuits. Um, so we have, you know, basically L1, L2, L3. The reason why is I like to break everything up into threes if I can, if I, um, it leaves me with a, an extra line in case we're gonna add more on later on. So this is a three phase um, uh, Eaton uh, outdoor unit. Um, it is rated for 60 amps, 240 volts. Uh, the reason why it's three phase or single phase is because it does have that third lug that allows me to go ahead and either bond the neutral or just run an L3 aspect for the for the solar when we're running um, uh, stepped up theory uh, parallel series and things like that. It allows me to kind of get away with it and the, the cost is only about 30 or 40 dollars more and it's outdoor rated so definitely definitely recommended. Allows you to get away with pretty much anything that you need to. Uh, let me go ahead and show you the other side here. Oh, is this thing still recording? Anyways, let me keep going. <laughs> so, this is not a net metering system. We do not have a net metering base on the outside or anything that's grid tie whatsoever, okay? This is an off-grid application. Doesn't matter if you're in the city, outside. It's the same principle all the way through. So the three main inverters are coming into a breaker switch system that uh, gets disconnected in case for emergency purposes, for fire departments, things of that nature. Um, it is labeled, uh, tagged, and uh, registered and everything like that. So I did not label the three here because this is the emergency disconnect or you have your main line disconnect for whatever reason. Right now, as you can see, he is completely, he's off off. So there is no plan. He's an off grid house. This meter has stopped. And I think the last time he was on the on the grid was during the last uh, rainstorm. It was down about like 17%, and so was I. You know, that's just part of the game right there, right? Um, this is the uh, Solar Edge uh, transformer. Uh, so it takes 240 volts, uh, L1, L2, and it brings it into a neutral bond, which basically allows um, a neutral or ground to travel through and make 120 volts. I don't know. Sorry. It's, it's not, I don't have a great camera guy, so... <laughs> um, this is Solar Edge here. Now GrowWatt um, has these and they're a little bit bigger, so forth like that. Um, still rated about 5,000 watts, but definitely recommended if you're uh, not running a shop or if you're running the, uh, the system um, for the GrowWatt inverters, if you're not running them as three phase, you know. There you go, get in there. Right, close that up. Always nitpicking your job, right? Not even done 10 years later. 
All right, let me go ahead and show you the solar array. So our next job that we're gonna be doing is very similar to this. Uh, it's gonna be out in Oklahoma, out in the middle of the woods. We're close. We got a little farm, but it's a solar farm. So we ran a lime 297 feet to the location of the home, to where we just came from. Um, this is the solar array. There's 36 solar panels. Um, monocrystalline. I think they're the Canadian 390 watt mono, but let me go ahead and check real fast. What does that say? Oh, it's the Inshine 390 watt mono bifacial Z and shine 25 year tier one warranty sorry tier one warranty uh so what we did for this application here i like to use uh steel for everything so this is one and a half by one and a half box tube all right 24 foot lengths goes pretty far that's what we use as our header from the main post itself uh, this is just three by three, uh, 100,000 thick, so it's it's a little over 16 gauge, but it's not exactly eighth inch, so it's kind of like, you know, it's metric, fucking metric. Anyways, we got the uh, 24 sticks of the one and a half by one and a half box tube going across the uh, the whole frame, going down as the webs and also as the stringers themselves. Anything that's extra, we just take a sawzall and nip them off. Uh, we're going to be putting caps on these things right here to kind of, you know, just help out for bugs and birds and stuff like that. Other than that, pretty clean. Um, all the wire gets ran uh, in protected, coated uh, uh, flex tube or seal tight or whatever you want to call it. All wires get zip tied to the frame and tucked behind out of eyesight as much as possible. All color, now this is where it gets tricky because <laughs> if you're running red, it's noticeable. So what we do is we just run black with everything and we label accordingly so it's black on black and it hides the wires and everything else as you can see or don't see it is uh three pounds wide so it's roughly about 19 foot wide here and then i think it's uh i think it's 40 foot long i'm not 100 sure i forgot it's been a minute so his power output on this particular uh setup here is 13,552 watts um the highest i've seen so far was around like 11,900 something like that and uh that was from the end of november till now and and now it just turned into to may so uh power output should start rising and um it, it's it's pretty cloudy as you can see right now so trying to get some numbers here but that's where that data logger really comes into play so all right anyways uh before i keep talking about absolutely nothing here um like and subscribe hopefully i can help you out with uh, any projects that you have I'm always here, um, questions, things like that. My number is 903-910-5497. I am your local solar hero. Thank you. God bless.